Hello everyone, I uh, just wanted to take a few minutes here, probably uh, 5 or 10 minutes, to quickly go through the medicinal chemistry of vasodilators. And uh, the objective is, to, um, is for you to be able to, at the end of this lecture, um, for you to be able to explain the mechanism of action of vasodilators, um, to recognize the chemical scaffold of minoxidil and hydralazine. That basically means if you are shown the structure of these molecules on an exam, you should be able to recognize those. Uh, to understand the effect that acetylation has on the metabolism of hydralazine. And to explain the prodrug strategy used with minoxidil. Um, so there are a lot of other vasodilators available. Um, but for the purpose of this lecture, we are going to only discuss minoxidil and hydralazine. So quickly the mechanism of action. Uh, hydralazine and hydralazine and minoxidil, they're both vasodilators and they mainly affect the vascular smooth muscles. The way they exert their, their action is by opening of ATP sensitive potassium channels. When the potassium channels are open then this leads to an increase in the efflux of potassium from the cells which causes hyperpolarization of vascular smooth muscles and then that leads to the closure of voltage gated calcium channels. It is the reduced intracellular calcium level that ultimately is going to lead to vasodilation. Now in addition to uh, the effects noted above, in addition to this effect you also have uh, you have additional effects by hydralazine. So hydralazine is going to inhibit in osiotol triphosphate causing release of calcium from smooth muscle storage and that's going to lead to reduction in, in contraction of smooth muscle cells which is going to uh, be the contributing factor for uh, vasodilation. All right, so hydralazine is, this is a structure, so you should be able to recognize this, this structure here, and this is minoxidil. All right, hydralazine and minoxidil are, are listed here as antihypertensive vasodilators. Let's talk about the photo, physical chemical properties here. Um, both of these drugs are actually well absorbed orally. They're well absorbed orally. However, because of metabolism in the GI tract, you end up with low bioavailability. Okay, now minoxidil um, actually is a prodrug that requires activation, and the activation is done through the metabolism, and it's activated to an NO sulfate, which we'll take a look at in the next slide. Hydralazine is 85% plasma bound, uh, plasma protein bound, whereas minoxidil is not bound at all; is not bound to plasma protein. A quick look at the metabolism from these two drugs. So uh, this here shows us the um, metabolism of hydralazine and minoxidil. So hydralazine here, as you can see, you have two main metabolites. Um, you have the acetylated metabolite, acetylated. And you also have oxidation of the aromatic chain. When you see a line in the middle of the aromatic chain like this, it means the oxidation can happen at any of these positions. Any of these positions here can have the acetylation. Um, more often than not, you have the, the oxidation uh, as far away from the other side of the ring because of steric effects. But any of these positions are fair game for the oxidation. Now, um, with the exception of the minoxidil NO sulfate, all the other metabolites that you see on these slides are inactive. So this right here is a minoxidil NO sulfate, and you have the NO and the sulfate here, and that's the only active metabolite. All the other metabolites are inactive. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the acetylated uh, hydralazine. As you understand, and I'm sure you've, you've heard that before in other classes, there are two types of phenotypes when it comes to uh, acetylators. You have the fast acetylators, 
and you have the slow accelerators. So for patients that have fast acetylation, obviously this reaction is, is, is going fairly quickly and you're going to end up with less hydralazine in, um, in the plasma and more of the metabolites, okay? However, with patients that are slow acetylators, since this process is, is fairly slow, this process is fairly slow, you end up with more hydralazine in the plasma than, um, than with fast acetylators. But the, basically the moral here, the, the, the bottom line here is uh, fast acetylators are going to metabolize hydralazine quicker, slow acetylators are going to metabolize it slower, and so there will be a higher concentration of hydralazine in, in the system. Uh, second thing that's important, the only active metabolite of either one of these drugs is the NO sulfate of minoxidil. All right, I hope this helps. This is the end of the, um, the, the vasodilators lecture.